the Data Challenge Awards. My name is Elliot Greenberger. I'm General Manager of Divi. And frankly, this is a really exciting night for us. It's the first time that we've ever done an event like this. Um, and it's a great chance to celebrate the civic data community, to recognize people who ride Divi. Let's recognize them. who's a member. Good number of you. All right. That's good. Who has never ridden Divi before? Don't worry. All right. Some of the finalists haven't ridden Divi, but they know the game. <laughs> Um, so before we get to the awards, we want to share some exciting news. Um, this week, we've actually begun our expansion, our first major expansion. Uh, we're currently at 300 stations, but we'll be to 476 stations. And in order, uh, the person who will talk more about the expansion is Sean Whitehill. He's an assistant commissioner of the Chicago Department of Transportation. And he's going to share more details about our big expansion. Thanks, Elliot. First slide. As Elliot said, I kind of stole my thunder. We like to do things subtly here, so you may not have heard anything about the expansion. Actually, you probably haven't heard anything about the expansion. But we are doing an expansion. It started yesterday. We're pretty excited about it. We haven't been able to tell people about it yet. Hopefully, we'll get to that eventually. But 476 stations will actually be the largest bike share system in North America based on the number of stations. So we're pretty excited. So you can kind of see there's maps, um, a couple different maps. Uh, the one on um, your left is the Divi expansion map, and that just kind of shows you what the uh, system looks like now. So the light blue, which you can kind of see, is our current service area. The pink is our uh, service area when we're done with this expansion this year. Um, and then on the other side, one of the things we decided to do is we actually use data and look at things just like all of you did for this contest to kind of figure out how to better install the station. So last time we installed when we launched, we did kind of a hopscotch all over the place pattern. It was not, it was actually a, because of the way we're getting the stations approved as we're installing them that made it more difficult. All the stations that we're installing over the next uh, month and a half have been approved. They're all ready to go. And so what we're doing is we're actually grouping them by what we call neighborhood areas. So that in those areas, like for example, you can see Brownsville, Maryville, South Shore, those stations will all be installed within about a week of each other. And people who live in those neighborhoods will have an instant network, places to ride to and from. So we're pretty excited about that. So we're going to be done by June. We've got 176 stations, 1,760 bikes. Um, and we can't wait. I'm going to have one kind of near my house. I can't wait to live in the service area again. I moved out of it last year, and I'm excited to be in there again. Um, 87 square miles, and about 38% of the land area. So right now, we serve about 19% of the geographic area of the city of Chicago. We're actually doubling our footprint. So we'll serve well, uh, nearly 40% of the city of Chicago. Next one. And we're actually going to serve a lot more people. So right now we serve about 800,000 people, about 33% of the population of the city. We're actually going to go be serving about half the population of the city, over actually 56% of the population. Again, excited to bring the service to more people. And finally, no slide? Okay. That's it. So we're going to be 50 total. Of the 50 total, and we're incredibly, incredibly excited about it. Um, we are, you know, it, this has been, we've been planning the expansion now forever, it seems like. Um, this was supposed to happen last spring, and then our bank, our uh, equipment provider, not our operator, but our equipment provider, not Motivate, uh, went bankrupt on us. And so we couldn't get equipment, we had to delay, but now finally here, everything's in the city, and we're ready to go. Back to it. All right, let's get started. So if you're tweeting tonight's ceremony, you can feel free to use the hashtag Divi Data. Also, this is a ceremony, but you can also get up anytime you want. There's beer in the back on that side. There's more pizza here. So feel free to take a break um, and enjoy that. So for the Divi Data Challenge, we released over 3.2 million trips that occurred during 2013 and 2014. It's the first time that we've released a whole year's worth of data and it was a lot for our entrants to play with. So we provided 3.2 million anonymized trips, and that included a bunch of different data points. We shared the start time and start station, the end time and the end station, 
And then some of the details about who rode that trip. So whether they were an annual member or whether they were a 24-hour pass user. And if they were a member, we indicated whether this person was male or female and their year of birth. So we released this to the public earlier this year and gave them about a month to create something great, which was really anything that they wanted to create. We received nearly 40 excellent entries, and our team at Divi narrowed these down to the top of three entries in four categories. Most beautiful, most creative, most insightful, and most comprehensive. We then posted the finalists on RedEyeChicago.com, where the public could vote on their favorite entries. Tonight, we'll announce those winners. So all the finalists, or many of them are here in the front row, um, all finalists were, were will receive a Divi package that includes two Divi memberships, and the winners will also receive a package from Microsoft that includes an Xbox One, Xbox Connect, Windows Phone, and a BizSpark software package, as well as a full-page ad in Red Eye. So, before we get to the first category, uh, I just want to take a moment to thank some of our partners for this first Divi Data Challenge. First of all, a big thank you to Red Eye. Thank you for hosting the voting portion of the contest and for being our media partner to get the word out. Thank you also to Microsoft for donating prizes for the winning entries and for supporting civic engagement and data in the city of Chicago. A very important thank you to the team here at 1871 who made this space available for us and for supporting technology and innovation within and beyond these walls. And finally, of course, thank you to Goose Island for donating tonight's beer and for being a big supporter of the city and Viking, the Viking community in general. So have a round of applause for all the partners. All right, so we'll be highlighting the three finalists in each category and then announcing the winner in each. So if you're announced as the winner, uh, please come up so we can recognize you and feel free to say something about your entry. Remember, we'll be announcing the best overall visual visualization at the end of the night which was selected by the Divi team. So if you don't win in your category, there's still a chance to win the overall prize. And I'll also just say, you know, everyone is a winner in our book, <laughs> of course. And when we started this contest, uh, we were sort of questioning whether, you know, how we should do it. And what we realized is that a lot of the people who were going to enter would probably have created what they created anyway, um, because people are so passionate about data, because they're so passionate about the city and passion about open data. Um, so really, this is just sort of the icing on the cake for us. So to get started, uh, presenting the first category, most beautiful, will be Amanda Woodall, Program Director at the Chicago Department of Transportation. Thank you, everybody. The most beautiful category recognizes the entry that is the most visually appealing in its illustrations. In the case of these particular finalists, uh, these were all animations, which showed trips moving throughout space and time. The first finalist is Matthew Shaxta, who created a 3D visualization of 2014 Divi trip, uh, Divi trip data using curves to show hourly trips between stations and a chord diagram to show daily flows between neighborhoods. Matthew is a civil engineer by training that ventured into the territory of data visualization simulation and computational thinking. He has a passion for the built environment and is currently a computational designer in the city design practice of the architectural, uh, sorry, of the architecture engineering firm Skidmore, Owings and Merrill. The second, the second finalist is Michael Freeman who created a moving map that allows you to visualize Divi trips and lets you control the map to explore different visualizations. Michael is a lecturer at the Information School at the University of Washington. Previously, he worked as a data visualization specialist at the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation. The third finalist entry comes from Mike Joyce and Patrick Carolyn who together created a moving model of all, Divi data, uh, of all Divi trips made in 2014. Mike is a recovering Southern Californian <laughs> and a budding data scientist. Patrick is a data scientist currently at Huron Consulting. He's lived in Chicago since 2004, where he's worked in various startups and consulting firms specializing in data engineering, visualization, 
and analysis.